All right, welcome to day two. <laughs> so today is going to be a fun but busy day. So right now we're getting ready to go to Universal Hollywood. We've been to Orlando, so we're excited to check out the differences here at Universal Hollywood. We are doing the VIP tour program. So we'll definitely show you parts of that along the way. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit more about why we decided to go that route and why it might be beneficial for you or not, you know, depending on your circumstances. So yeah, it's going to be a fun day. And then we have our welcome dinner tonight for the Adventures by Disney Park actually kicking off. So it's going to be a busy day. All right, let's All right, we are up to the VIP experience. They have a little breakfast for us. So coffee, juices. Yogurt, fruit, hard boiled eggs, fancy coffee machine, water. Off to the left, some really cool cars from the far distant future of 2015. Woo! Oh, look at, I'm really enjoying cool. my flying car. You guys, I've yeah. had it for about seven years. It's great. Oh, look at the and what can I say? The Flintstones cars, they rock. They're the first eco-friendly cars. <laughs> powered by foot power in the movie. You might even call them prehistoric. Oh! <laughs> now, this too fast, yeah, too furious oh, you skyline. This is not street legal. You cannot drive it in Los Angeles, so we have to tow it from place to place. But Paul Walker drove that, and the gyrosphere, the glass is missing because the glass was never there during filming. We added it in digitally after filming completed. Because if you think about it, you would have been able to see the reflection of the camera and the crew. So we just added it in digitally. And then this tank is actually called a Bradley fighting vehicle. It is made mostly out of plywood. We got it at Ikea. Uh -huh. yeah, it took forever to put together, and then there were like four screws left over. What are you going to do? No, I'm kidding. But we did make it mostly out of plywood. If you if you look directly at it, uh, you can see that it's painted to look like metal. We did this because a real Bradley fighting vehicle, not only would it be very expensive, but they're difficult to maneuver. So it would have been uh, taken a lot more time to move it from set to set than if we have a wooden tank that's much lighter and much more efficient to move from place to place. Because when we're filming, we're not filming generally, with some notable exceptions, in chronological order. We're filming based on location. So we'll take a location and we'll film all of the scenes that take place in that one location. The actors will change their costumes, do their thing, and then we will move on to a different location. So if we need that Bradley fighting vehicle for multiple locations, wire uh, they come with handles on the back and wheels on the bottom so that we can move them from set to set so it's interesting comparing real foliage to fake foliage kind of a mishmash if you will but that scene that i just showed you with the mobile lab unit take a look at your screens one more time and listen one key difference between the mobile lab unit that you saw which is made out of wood and the mobile lab unit that you hear made out of metal in the movie, so you hear metal to match what you're seeing, right? That's called Foley. Oh! Looks like something's a brewing about to begin. This is perfect, there. It's such a good idea. Let's just hang out and see this weather change. We've got some thunder, some lightning. What else do we need to complete the picture of a thunderstorm? Let's make it rain, baby! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, weather effects are one of the most intriguing elements of filmmaking, if you ask me. Now, our weather effects, we use them to height the tension to make scenes even more intense. Because we as human beings, we can't control the weather. So if you see weather in a movie, it makes us feel subconsciously out of control, right? If it's I know. a scary scene, it's scary 
her. Yep, whenever a dinosaur shows up in Jurassic Park, it's always raining, right? What? Oh, my goodness. I am so sorry. Guys, I have to have walked to my phone this is coming. You've got a flash flood. A lot of people think actors use stunt doubles because they're weak, because, oh, I don't want to get hurt, I don't want to get injured. It's really for insurance purposes. Because if an actor becomes injured during a filming, that can delay filming for days, weeks, months, and ends up costing the production a bunch of money. So, we'll use stunt doubles carefully trained professionals to make sure that stunts go according to plan. And you might recognize it from here on this, uh, on your screen, with this scene. This is the same mobile lab unit that you can see off to the left. But that mobile lab unit is actually made out of wood. Oh my goodness! Oh! I saw the floor of that! Oh! Yeah, I did see the ponchos! I had no idea that was coming, I'm so sorry. It's all good though. like that, you're really not going to like what happens with the Spinosaurus. Three, two, one, nothing! Ah! She's on sale, actually. She's half off. Take a look. Oh, yeah. She's on half of a dinosaur. We call it a half a saurus. So, not only with our sets do we only build that the camera's going to see, that Spinosaurus used to stand outside of our Jurassic Park attraction that went sadly extinct in 2018. Uh, and then we rebuilt it to be Jurassic World. Oh, yeah, very exciting. Uh, brief funny story about that Spinosaurus. The tour guides are all facing you, right? So I'm looking at you, and I know I'm not fairly well, so I know what's happening behind me, so I can point out. But you might not know that we caught the shark. Look, there it is. So all is fine and well. In fact, very clean and pristine since we cleaned up all the carnage caused by the shark, which evidently is still in the water. I'm so confused. I've never seen this before. But it appears there's another shark in the water, but... Oh, and I wonder if that's Scuba Scott out there. Hey, Scott, is that you? Scott, there's a shark in the water! Oh. Great, Scott. Oh, that's the wrong universal film, right? But you know what? He's gonna be fine. We'll clip soda she can that out, right? And we're gonna be fine, too. We're gonna stop over here by these barrels of... Probably flammable gasoline. Seems like a good idea, right? What could possibly go wrong? Except you have some bait out there, I think, where that yellowish blue is. The shark may have found that in this distraction. And you know what else? If you watch any of Shark Week, you might know that sharks do not like fire. This is good. Does anybody have a marshmallow? Oh, never mind. There he is. in the back, Bruce. There you go. Fourth time is the charm. How about it for Bruce the shark? Terrifying, right? Yeah. Maybe not, but he is the most talented shark that we are aware of because he's the only shark that can actually swim backwards. Look at Bruce do the backstroke there. And actually, that's not the same shark that was used for the film Jaws, but it's similar in that it's plastic, but different in that it actually works. We used a few mechanical sharks to film Jaws out of the East Coast on Martha's Vineyard. It was not filmed here. This was created in 1976, the year after Jaws was released in theaters. But when you're working with the shark at the first on the outside of filming, it actually sank all the way to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And then after that, it kept causing so many problems that the release of the film was delayed more than 100 days. Steven Spielberg, a young 26 years old at the time, thought his career was over, but he turned things over to the fantastic editor, Verna Fields, and created what is still considered to be one of the top grossing films of all time. It's actually going to come out in theaters in 3D next month, so check it out, right? At the screen, you'll hear a little bit about the filming experience that Peter Jackson had when he was making King Kong. 
It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old, and I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the bench. And Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from you know prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island, and it's great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just get them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island.
I think it's about time for Nicole. Yes. All right. So while we're switching, take a look at your screens, and you'll see how those practical starting mid September going until the end of October. You probably get to walk around this area, which will be a pretty good up close personal experience. It's not very intense. It looks like. Our friend Norman Bates may not be here today to say hello. You can still not only see the Bates Motel, also the Psycho House and the TV and the movie. A little spoiler alert there for you. And there's Norman Bates himself actually to say hello. Looks like he likes to come to greet the VIP guests here. Yes, with the VIP treatment for sure. Yeah. Just past the Psycho House, you'll see a giant disaster. This is actually the crash site from Steven Spielberg's 2005 hit film, War of the Worlds. Sorry, Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. I'll let the director himself, along with production designer Rick Carter, tell you more about creating this set. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around the vision that Stephen has. He first began to sit down and talk about the war of the world. That thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. If you're doing good, I keep messing me. Listen, I don't have to sit down. Close your eyes, okay? Sit down close. Bye. Robbie, get in. Get in. Yes, that was a real Boeing 747 purchased and used for the film War of the World. All of that set, by the way, is only in the scene we're about to be directed by Jordan Peele. Here he is. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star <laughs> Ricky Jupe Park. Over there, look into the winking. Kind of like the wow, a bit just too. looking just like the kids in that old 90s movie. <laughs> That's what the whole place is loosely based off. Of. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. This is to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Oh, it's not looking so live. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy, the old Rush Frontier town, lies a sinister secret. It is smacked up in the center of the UFO hotspot. What's a bad miracle? Who is looking for a federal witness that we are protecting on this vehicle? Yeah. 
So now we're going to hide out in a street racer party here. Well, maybe we'll see Roman Reddy hopefully soon. But in the meantime, let's party, all right? There's always a street racer party in every Fast and Furious film. We're a little bit overdressed, some of us do this. Myself and Luna, it's all good. It's always a fun party until the FBI breaks it up. I hate him when that happens. Hey guys, help me out here. What are we doing, Roman? This is what we're doing. This is the race day after party. And the boy, what about Roman Pierce? Roman Pierce, FBI, don't move. Roman Pierce, the FBI, don't move. That's right, party's over. You know how long that took to iron the shirt? I'm not. You're under arrest right now. Yeah, I'm not going to be a bad guy. I'm not going to be a bad guy. First of all, I don't work to you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. And I'll have some just to clear out there, otherwise we can't do this. Then be the same. Team, I say, I'm the one who won the guy. Never yeah, mind a whole lot bigger than yours. Uh, that's what it's about. Let's go, Cookie Books. Yeah, uh, let's see what I'm going to do. It's cheap. So I'm going to have to go get this off shop. It's going to get out of the shop. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Golden Fish? Shut up your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. We just have a new business. Call you back. It was on vibrate. You're not crazy, though. I just can't hold the phone. Buddy, we're on our way up. Drive the moon down the vehicle. It's about to get way down the entrance. All right, you can't have a Fast and Furious film without some action. It's all going to happen here in Act 3. So go ahead and put those three key glasses on and you can protect yourself. We all need to protect ourselves from shots. We can't get here. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen here. So it's going to get supercharged. So do watch your personal belongings as well. Oh, there you go. Speak now, or we won't get right! This is our turn. All right, we are at our buffet lunch that is imparted part of our tour. So I'm going to show you that and then get my food. Over here they have all kinds of different drinks, pops, lemonade, water. 
coffee. And what's nice is they do put you in a table with your group. Like your family group. Alright, looks like lots of desserts. Chocolate colored strawberries. New York style cheesecake. Um, beef tri chip. Looks like they're cooking up some shrimp there. Some risotto. Looks like french fries. Macaroni and cheese. It's like prime time, so it's hard to show a lot of it. Some cheeses, fruit, salad. Cheese tortellini, cucumber salad, hummus. And yeah, so we'll show you what we get. Uh huh. Nice. Is it good? Yeah. Roll looks like has a salad, some chicken strips, some fries, coke. All right. Here's my first plate. So I got some macaroni and cheese, watermelon, some bread, potato Caesar salad, some mm. olives, cheese, tortellini salad. Looks good. Ashton said the tri-tip was really good. How's the chicken strips, Ron? Good. Good. <laughs> All right. Got a one single chicken strip. Got a little bit more fruit. Some more bread. This is um actually Rowan's cheese that I took for him. A little flatbread, and then I grabbed my desserts. This little tart looks so nice and refreshing. Cheesecake, apple pie. Some uh, um, I'm not sure what kind of cheese this is, so I thought I'd try it. But yeah, Rowan had um, some more salad, french fries, and then a bunch of cheese, which he ended up not liking the cheese, but cheese crap. <laughs> but it was yummy. This is pretty cool too. They have a spot where you can charge your phone. So we are at our welcome dinner for our adventures by Disney. So they have a buffet with a few options. So Rowan got the salad, grilled chicken. I'm surprised he didn't get the fish. I'm gonna give it my second serving. Okay. I got the chicken, steak, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, and some candied walnuts. My food <laughs> didn't agree to be on camera. <laughs> he got the same as me for the most part. Wait, well, that's so different. He's got a little feta. That's the only difference. And blueberries. <laughs> All right, everybody. So it's a nice day once again. <laughs> We're pretty exhausted by the end of these days to close it out the night of. Um, so I'm closing yesterday's vlog today. So we completed our VIP experience at Universal Hollywood, which was awesome. Um, so we had six hours with a guide. When you do the VIP tour, you get a different tram tour than those that just do the normal tram tour we get. So you actually get to get off the tram, you get to go into some of the sets, which was pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't see the Back to the Future area because we were filming a commercial there. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But we did see like the Lionsgate. We got to see a lot of scenes that were part of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They share a lot of information about the scenes, about the actors, who's been there, what was happening there, uh, Lady Gaga mu music videos, things like that. Um, then you get to, you know, still experience the same parts like the Kong and the Jaws, you know, where he comes up, Bruce comes up and shoots water at you. And then um, the flash flood is really cool, that area. So you could see Norman Bates like you do um, if you're on the normal tram tour. So, yeah, but you also get a smaller motor coach than you would on the big tram tour, which is also nice. Um, they give you complimentary water on the tram as well. Um, so, yeah, it was a, the tram tour was super cool. Um, I would say that was pretty worth it in itself um, but when we started the day and you would have saw those clips there was the breakfast buffet which was you know not humongous but it was definitely plenty um, and some juices and you know things like that water in there um, then you also get unlimited express pass and that's where I really found doing the price of the VIP tour 
versus just buying normal tickets and adding the express pass was really more cost effective when I took into account the cost of express pass because it's very expensive at Universal to add that on. So I took that into account and the cost of what our meals would be because you also get a completely catered uh, gourmet lunch which was also very nice and you guys would have saw that as well. Um, it was just more economical for us to do it that way. So, and I bought my tickets on Undercover Tourist, which they were a bit cheaper doing it that way versus the Universal website directly. So I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, it looks like ours was $3.85.25 a person. So it's not a cheap thing, but I knew we'd only be there one day. I wanted to try to maximize as much time as we could there. Um, the park is small, so yeah, so you could definitely just buy normal tickets not get express pass and you know try to do it that way um, but like the Kung Fu Panda no it was a Simpsons ride the Simpsons ride had a 60 minute wait <laughs> and that's not like you know one of the best rides so um, we were able to just zoom right past all that with the express pass that comes with your VIP so it was only a busy day so I'm very glad that we went this route um, I think the boys really enjoyed it I wouldn't say that it's beneficial if you have real little kids. There was a four-year-old with us who was adorable, fearless, but I think it's a little bit too slow of a pace maybe for someone his age. He didn't, like, he wasn't fussing or anything. He was a great kid, um, but I would imagine, you know, if my kids were younger, maybe that wasn't the best. Even Ashton struggled a little bit with, you know, waiting for the group and, you know, collecting up together at the end of the ride, moving together. So, and you don't get time to like go into the shops on this VIP experience. Um, you don't really have time to like break off and like go, you know, to a concession stand if you wanted to do that. So you can do all that after your six hours with the guide is over. Um, but that was a little bit of a struggle for him. So after our VIP tour was done, we did the animal actor show. It was really cute. And then Rowan and I rode the Secret Life of Pets ride, which was also very cute. Um, let's see and then we did a little bit of shopping and then got some voodoo donuts on the way out which are so good and then headed back to the hotel and then we had our uh, welcome dinner for the adventures by Disney part of the trip which actually officially started last night we started getting into the meat and bones of it today which is very exciting so I know a lot of that's going to be behind the scenes so I won't be able to show you a whole ton of that but I'll show you what I can and then insert pictures if I need to as well. Some places you can take picture, but you can't take video. So we'll see what I can show you guys. Um, yeah, the welcome dinner was okay. <laughs> I mean, it was fun to meet everybody and interact with everybody. Um, our table, they were really nice. Some folks from um, South Carolina and Florida, they were a big family. And um, they were really nice. Everybody we interacted with was nice. Our adventure guides, Shannon and Alyssa, are very nice. Um, there's a really cool older gentleman named Judd on the trip that's been on like seven adventures by Disney. And then there's a couple that have been on 13, <laughs> 13 adventures by Disney, which is amazing. Um, so I think that's a good testament to the, you know, what I'm going to experience <laughs> this week. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, the food though was kind of meh. <laughs> it was okay. Um, so, and it did include fear, uh, free beer and wine. So I tried, I'm not a wine drinker, and I tried it, and still don't like it. So didn't really partake in that, but there's also pop as well. So yeah, so at the end of all of our videos, we share a resource with you. So today I'm going to share the 988 line, which is something a little bit newer. Um, all communities should be getting the 988 short code dialing is what that's called. So it's a suicide and crisis lifeline. So they have resources and information. Um, so if you were to dial that, you would be able to get connected to um, a crisis line or if you need to start mental health services, you get the information on how to do that and you would just dial 988 to reach them. I will put the information below as well. Um, I think what I'll do to end out today's video so the next video hopefully you watch <laughs> I will explain what are the difference between 988 911 411 211 there's a lot of just n11 dialing or short code dialing 
Um, so I think that's what I will do in the next video. But ultimately, 988 is a resource line if you need mental health resources or if you are contemplating suicide or someone that you love may be contemplating suicide. So, all right. Well, please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like this video. We have a lot of content coming up here in the next few weeks, so definitely stick around. Thank you. Bye-bye.